On imom.com, we share ideas, insight, and inspiration. We do all that here too, by sharing the best kind of stories, mom stories. We're all at different ages and stages, but one thing we have in common is that we're striving and sometimes struggling to love our children well. It's the iMom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the iMom Podcast. Megan and Susan and Chloe with child and Abby. I I never include the baby. Yeah, it's so rude. (laughs) We are all here uh, this week to talk about not just love languages, but your self-love language. And I know this is something kind of new to everybody in the room except for me. And if this episode is not good, I blame Chloe. because Well, because I was talking to you about it one day and you're like, we should do an episode on this. And so now here we are. So I apologize. If it's not good, it is Chloe's fault. Um, So my understanding of self-love languages and I'll explain really more what they are after my story but I was helping a friend moved in into her new house and her bathroom was like beautiful it had my bathroom has one sink and I feel every time like my husband and I are brushing our teeth and getting ready in the morning I feel like the before scene in like house hunters or the couple's like we really need a bathroom with a double vanity because it's so hard for us to share one sink and that shows them like stumbling over each other and like <laughs> in, in black and white that is my life like you know so I I had serious like bathroom envy for my friend because she had double vanity. She had two, two closets. She had this gorgeous shower. And she says to me, she's like, yeah, but the bathroom's missing a tub. And she says, and I love a hot bath. And I was like, nope. I would be fine never taking a bath again. Like bubble baths <laughs> yeah. are not my thing. I do not like taking baths. And she just stared at me. She's like, do you not? love treating yourself to a nice hot bubble bath like at the end of a day or whatever and I was like no no I don't and you know that is an example of us all having different ways that we enjoy relaxing and we we boil it down to just oh I like to relax this way but it's really about how we like to show ourselves love and attention and care And just like everybody has a different language that they use to give and receive love from others, we also have different languages for self-love. And I don't think that moms take time to really think about how we want to feel love from ourselves. And this is important because the amount of of energy and time that we give ourselves is so precious. Like we don't do enough for ourselves because we don't have that much time. Um, But if you do have time and you just take the bubble bath, when the bubble bath bath isn't your thing, then you're wasting your time. So goal of today is to figure out what your self-love language is. Anybody read the Love Languages book? Yes. Yes? Yes. You know your love language? Okay. I will ask you yours in a moment. But the Five Love Languages, it's a best-selling book by Dr. Gary Chapman. I think it's like over 20 million copies sold at this point. And in a nutshell, love languages are how you show and want to be shown love. The research behind it shows that your particular language satisfies some deep-seated need within you. Can anybody name the five love languages off the top of your head? Yes. Go for it, Megan. Quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service, and gifts. Very good. Now, if you don't know your love language or your husband's love language, there is a link in the show notes to a quiz you can take and have your husband take it. And there's also a way to learn your child's love language, which can be really helpful. But I want to know everybody's love language, although I think I already know everyone in this room. So tell me your love language and how do you know that it is your love language? Like what tells you that it is? Megan, go first. Mine is quality time with gifts as a close second. Um, But I think mine is quality time because I am such an extrovert. And so when people are willing to sacrifice their time to spend time with me, it means the world. Um, And I, like I said, I'm an extrovert. So it really jazzes me to be around people. Mm -hmm. Do you know your husband's love language? Yes. His is words of affirmation, which is my worst thing, thing that I'm worst. What am I trying to say? The thing I'm worst at doing. Yeah. So that's really a struggle. <laughs> do they mean any, do words of affirmation mean anything to you or are you like just bad at giving them? But so I get really uncomfortable when people give me words of affirmation. Mm. I never know how to respond because I don't want to be like, oh, thanks so much. Because then I feel like I'm like confirming the affirmation, which feels weird. Um, and so I just I feel awkward because I never know how to react um, or I just do something that's really like self-deprecating or I'm like, no, no, you're too sweet. Like, no, which is even more awkward. So I think I 
feel awkward getting it, which is, so I feel awkward giving it, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Susan, what about you? Words of affirmation. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know it's that one? Um, I took the test. I but don't know. real life. Uh, I guess because, okay, so Mark, Mark would really like to weigh in this. He thinks I don't have a love language. In other words, I don't really need. Um, <laughs> you, don't need love. you don't need love. <laughs> I need love, but I'm okay, usually. It's funny. What? Yeah. There's got to be something, though. No, I think it's words of affirmation. I like words of affirmation because I, I like to do a lot of things. So I don't know. Megan, what would you say about that? Because I don't really react. I think, to... I think maybe you're a cross between words of affirmation and quality time. Yeah, probably. Maybe that's it. Mm. Chloe? Um, I'm quality time in my personal relationship, but I'm very words of affirmation at work. And oh, like she's looking at me when she says that, you mm. think I'm not giving enough? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm doing better, Susan, please. <laughs> no, I I think I just such a good girl. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. I think I, I like hanging out with people, and I like to give and receive quality time. But I like words of affirmation for things I'm putting a lot of effort into. Yeah, see, that's how I am. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I am. I give my love language that I like to give is physical touch. Um, and my receive, I think, is acts of service. I want to say uh, it's like the one that I, I most like receive. I thought it's usually the same. I think it can be. But I mean, because like uh, Megan said, a lot of people have like a one and two. So I think that's where my one and two is because I think I'm mainly physical touch. But I think acts of service is next. And I think that like to me, I would somebody putting their hand on my shoulder. It's really great. And I love it. And I appreciate it. But it doesn't necessarily feel the same as when I you know, kiss my husband on the head as I walk by yeah. as he's sitting in the recliner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. You look like you're deep in thought. Well, I was just wondering, like, if it's the same giving and receiving because I don't like giving acts of service. Like, I don't <laughs> like doing things for Oh, me. do you like acts of service? That's not one of yours, is it? Well, but it's becoming one mm. as we've gotten busy. Well, do you have a baby? I know. Well, yeah, like... <laughs> Even just like since we've moved and stuff, like Trent's yeah. been putting together stuff. I'm like, wow, thank you so much for doing that. It's like I can't do it myself, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm thankful. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, I was thinking. But like one of the big theories behind the love languages, and if you le read the book, is like you and your spouse might not speak the same language. So if you are speaking love in acts of service, and that is not the language he speaks, he might not understand that you're saying I love you. He thinks that I love you sounds like physical touch, yeah. and so talking about love language or uh, self-love languages same the same thing goes just like I said at the beginning if the bubble bath is not how you would receive self-love then d you don't do these cookie cutter things you know we you don't care for yourself in the same way someone else cares another woman cares for herself um so just going off what you know about the five love languages tell me what you think your self-love language might be and I'll give you some info and examples and then like when we've heard all five you can decide if you think that you know if you think you got it right so Chloe what do you think your self-love language would be well I don't think it's words of affirmation <laughs> because I need to be affirmed by outside sources <laughs> I don't know gifts you I think... love to buy things for myself. Okay, so <laughs> let me tell you. Well, okay, Megan and Susan, tell me what you think yours are, your self-love language. Mine would probably be either, yeah, buying myself something <laughs> or, like, scheduling a lunch or something to go do something with my friends mm -hmm. without without our kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. That's good. Susan, what do you think? Okay, I don't know how to say this. Mine is literally... Um, having time and space to just let my mind do anything like mm. like I I guess because of my schedule so packed I've always had so much I love a day or even a morning where I'm just like okay you're gonna just do or read or investigate whatever you want and I only allow myself to do it when Mark's out of town no obligations yes no so that obligations would be, that like, would be quality time oh nice yeah. yeah so like if I'm just you know if when he's out of town I'll be like I'm gonna watch that show I never watched because he didn't like it or I'm going to mm -hmm. um 
I'm going to lay in bed till 10 o'clock yeah. or I'm going to read this thing yeah. that I've been wanting to read. Just spiral yeah. out and That's do good. nothing. And I think everything. mine is acts of service. So I want to go through one at a time and kind of tell you guys what they look like, what the self-love language Wait, can looks like. Can you explain like. why, why you think yours is acts of service? Um, because I think like, that, that my life is really busy. And so an act of service when it comes to self-love is kind of helping um helping yourself with all of these like serving yourself in a way it, it, are you serving someone else in an acts of service no or are you serving yourself no how so, do you serve yourself that's a great <laughs> question and that's what i was just about to do i was going to explain how all these are self-love so i'll start with acts of service so it's a little bit tricky because acts of service can feel like something that you do for somebody else but it's really about showing that you care through tangible actions that's what an act of service is and you can do that for yourself for example, take time to prep lunches for yourself for the week so that you don't have to eat on the go or get McDonald's French fries in the middle of the day. So you mm, That's work, Abby. Yeah, that feels But you're obligatory. serving but if if your ultimate goal is to eat more healthy mm-hmm. or to stay on this meal plan so that you can feel feel good and and like, you know, you're eating food that fuels you, this then could be a problem. Um, another <laughs> act of service would be leaving the mess in the kids' room alone and organizing your own closet so ah. it's easier for you to get dressed in the morning. Or getting- oh, I get, I get, I totally get this because I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I've just been picking up after everyone, and I've been meaning to do you know whatever. You serve it was yourself, forever. so you it is still right. work. It's still work. But if you're like me, like I'm kind of always doing something. I'm always moving around the house, yeah. and so. Now I'm going to do it for myself, mm. you know, or another it's option. That thing on your to-do list done that's been there for like months that actually only takes 10 minutes, but like you mm, haven't yeah. had a chance yeah. to do it. Or also another one could be getting your groceries delivered. That oh, also oh, nice. kind of counts as an act of service. Yeah. Now I will say I am kind of torn between acts of service and gifts and gifts is my lowest for like actual love language because I struggle with budget and, you know, feeling guilty about spending. So did you say, Megan and Chloe, you both said gifts, right? For, yeah. for your self-love language. Okay. So here's the yeah. thing. Gifts communicate that you're worthy. Um, but when you splurge on a gift, uh, you're telling yourself you're worth it. So that doesn't mean you go and like pull your credit card out because gift giving as a self-love language is about being intentional, being very thoughtful. Um, it's more than just getting that latte mm. instead of the cup of coffee. It is Putting thought into loving yourself, just like you put thought into buying a gift for somebody else. Mm. So here are examples. You get yourself to get a gift that brings you peace, like a wind chime to put on the front porch. You get yourself a gift that takes care of your body, like a skincare product. Or um, a gadget that you've been wanting for the kitchen that makes it easier for you to make the smoothie that you love making in the morning. That's the kind of gift giving that shows self-love. It's something that really nurtures you in a way that you need to be nurtured. Okay, mine is planting flowers in my planners because then I pull up to my house Mm. and I see, oh, look how good that looks. So is that an act of service? I don't know. Or is that, like I said, it's like a gift. It's or is it a gift? Yeah, it's something that's it important to yeah. me. My husband. I don't think mine gifts anymore. I don't think yeah. mine gifts anymore because usually when I'm buying something that like I want to splurge on, it's something that's very impractical. An impulse. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so that might satisfy something else. Okay, mine, mine is more like about beauty when I drive up. Mm, it just yeah. flowers make me happy. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, and that was kind of the point. I wanted to know what you thought it was, and then I wanted to go through them and see if it if it makes you change your mind. And maybe Susan. So Chloe after, and I still don't know what we are. Well, it's after everyone, Susan's going to be like, "Yes, that one's mine. That one's mine. <laughs> They're all mine." So maybe Mark I is right. All of them. Maybe Mark is right. Okay. So physical touch. Now I know when you see her self love and then physical touch. I know what you think, but it's not that. But is it like a massage or something like that? Okay, so um, we have to give our bodies a break from the rigor that we put them through. And so some of the ways that you can show yourself love through physical touch is to take a nap, to go to bed early once a week, to turn down the thermostat and wrap yourself in a soft blanket. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Yes. Get a facial or massage. Oh, yeah. Stretch for five minutes. It's anything that is about touch or the like feeling your body and like your you know the or even like working out like I feel so much better if I work like so much less stressed or whatever yeah. if yeah. I yep. work out but like I have to make it a point to do it yeah, yeah. so the bubble bath would be the bu- bubble bath would be physical touch I think anything that involves like that feel yeah. aspect of okay. things so okay. um and then quality time 
quality time obviously is kind of the root of every love language because yeah. it t- everything takes time, which is my, why so many of us struggle to show ourselves love because it takes time that we're already giving to other people. Um, but you got to set aside the distraction. So quality time, self-love is like reading a book. Um, asking the friend who makes you smile to go for a walk together. I mean, you're giving yourself time with another person that feeds you. Um, Sit in nature by yourself and take it in and pray or meditate or, you know, just spend time in deep breaths. Or quality time self-love looks like saying no to an invitation when you are at capacity. Uh, Yeah, because what you described, Susan, of like having like a me day, Mm -hmm. I crave that so much because I feel like my schedule is always so packed. Mm -hmm. So having that time. Yeah, Susan, you literally hop from meeting to meeting. So do you think Mm -hmm. that that's why quality time was the one that jumped out at you? Yeah, because uh, my my brain is so constricted to the what I have to be in that next meeting or whatever that having a day where I can just like, oh, I'm gonna go out there and repot those orchids or. Halfway through, I may leave it and go do something It's on your own schedule. Yes, or no schedule, whatever whim takes me. It's just, it's like, I call it floating. I just want to float through a day. That's good. I want to float. Yep, yep. And then words of affirmation. This one's probably the easiest and the hardest at the same time. And it's more than just reciting affirmations every day, even though that's a good place to start. But like, notice what is praiseworthy. Like, if you made it through a tough assignment at work, tell yourself that took persistence and focus. Good job. Um, Make a playlist of songs that make you feel good. Keep a one sentence journal of things you did well in a day. Or Megan, when someone pays you a compliment, just say thank you. Like you can like receive, receive it Mm -hmm. instead of putting up some kind of block or. I know, I know. It just feels, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be over it. (laughs) So journaling is words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I like to journal. Yeah. Well, especially if you write like one good thing that you did. (laughs) Chloe's like figuring this out. I'm living on the outside of myself right now. (laughs) So do you think that you, does anybody change their, their, their mind about what they think they are? I don't know what I am. No, I guess mine would still be quality time because I would still, I hate being by myself. So. I think any of those would be a no for me because most of those things you like do by yourself. So I think I'd rather just do quality time and go do something with a friend. No, but Megan, uh, you really like to enjoy and go slow. Like when you are getting ready to go out with your makeup and your hair, that's like your space time. That's that's a big thing. I actually really, that's actually a really good one, mom. I actually really dislike when I'm in a rush to get ready mm. to go somewhere. And yeah. your husband so, like, knows that. Like, he, he takes the kids. Yeah. So this is I'll take the kids so that I can get ready for, like, the full hour and a half and, like, not feel like I smudged eyeliner across my face. Hour and a half. I know. I know. I know. That's her quiet time. That's I'm my entire you. date. <laughs> I know. No, that is literally, her I have to keep a, my phone or a notepad in the bathroom because it's also the time where I, like, actually just... I'm not distracted by anything and I literally just think. So I have to keep something there because like I'll think of either things I have to do or like something that came to my mind and I have to like she it's literally when float. I just think. Yeah. Her brain is floating. That's good. So I think that if you heard all five of those and you're like, yes, I need every one of those, I think it might be a sign that you do need to take a little bit more time for yourself. Um, just like if you read the love languages in like Uh, in light of romantic love and all of them sound like something you need you might be a little bit love starved Mm. um so you know give yourself a little bit of love and check out this article i think it's out today actually on i mom but i was thinking you know if you're a mom you probably do need all those things i mean we're in a time of self-sacrifice as a mom and so all of them sounded good yeah yeah and in the show notes i'll include a link to an article of 31 ideas for daily mom time um, and it's more than a bubble bath, I promise. Because if you're like me, you're like, I don't want to be told to take a bubble bath. It's too hot. I, yeah. just, I don't. I don't want to do it. Medieval so. filth culture. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I I'm know. like, does no one? I'm not a bubble bath gal. Obviously, I have friends that are. But I'm like, does no one think it's just weird that you're just sitting in your filth? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would take a shower first if See, I did. I was gonna say I love yeah, a hot exactly. shower. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, exactly. Oh my goodness! I just have to throw this in there. We can take it out. But if you take a bath in hotel baths. <laughs> Think twice. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Just think twice. Okay. Warning from Megan Tickner. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. If you think you know yourself, love language, tell us how you show it to yourself. We really want to know. And then you can also um, read through this article, put a link in the show notes so that you can, um, you know, just find some ideas and start to love yourself better. And thanks for listening. 
Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.